Hey there, today I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive and take a look at the Mars-Pluto opposition um, and just give you my thoughts. I am going to just um, kind of wander through my thoughts, which is what I do sometimes <laughs> on these videos, but it helps me um, get to the deeper layers of what it is I'm trying to say. So I don't know exactly what will come out. We'll see here, but um, uh, I am Marina Orms and I'm here with your Astro Perspective for Sunday, October 20th. We are looking today at the Mars Pluto opposition that is heading toward exact as we speak. And um, and then we've got some shifts coming up. The Mars uh, Pluto opposition continues into next year. And uh, these are some potent energies and potent planets that I think really speak to our times and some of the things that we are working through individually and collectively. So, and I referred to that Mars-Pluto opposition during the Aries, uh, my video for the Aries full moon um, that came out on uh, Thursday, October 17th, and, as well as uh, Sunday, October 13th. So check out those videos for a little bit more insight into that Mars Pluto opposition and how it showed up in our Aries full moon um, in October, October 17th. And uh, so the Mars energy and Mars and Pluto are a potent combination, right? Sometimes they can be very volatile, uh, very uh, difficult to contain or control or predict because Mars is the is the warrior energy. It is the air the energy of action and movement. It is impulsive. In Cancer right now, it is also emotionally based. So we have that additional layer of Mars being uh, reactive. Right? Our, our warrior self is a little on the emotional, re emotionally reactive side. And so that can come out in unexpected or unpredictable ways uh, when things need to move uh a little more directly or spontaneously in in terms of our expression of our feelings and that type of thing um mars is the energy of course of aggression and uh, it's the warrior planet so um it is also the energy of action and courage. So we can think of it as having positive and negative expressions, just like everything else. And, you know, um, that's my perspective. I guess not Not everyone thinks aggression is, is a negative, but that's how I'm um, viewing it in this context. So, uh, so thinking about the energy of power and using power over another person or group, um, how now Pluto is the theme of power. Um, and so Pluto in Capricorn, where it is placed currently, is bringing up themes of power through authority. And Capricorn is the sign of authority, among other things, um, structures and systems and our human limitations and so on. But having Pluto in Capricorn is bringing in almost this darker side of truth and how power is used and maybe exposing some of what has been in the shadows in terms of how power is used and having that come into consciousness, into the light where we can see it and uh uh, you know, work on healing it or confronting it or whatever that may look like. So, and again, these are energies. They can show up in and do show up in many different ways. So one of the things that Pluto in Capricorn is asking of us is for us to find our power, <laughs> to ask um, those who have maybe given up their power to see themselves as the authority, 
And so for groups that uh, haven't been in power, for groups that have been marginalized or um, uh, oppressed or disempowered in one way or another, that sense of needing to be the authority to say, wait a minute, this is... Um, this is something that needs to happen and who's to tell me it's not going to or who's to tell me that I have to do XYZ. So the there's an empowerment process that happens through working with this Pluto energy. At the same time, of course, we are having to deal with and confront the power over experience, the power or the, the experience of power being used to control, which is another word for Capricorn. So power that is used for control, power that is used to maintain a, a system, um, whether that is a system of oppression or a system that some people like maybe, but it, it really isn't good for all people. Um, so dealing with some of those kinds of themes are, you know, we could feel them in the world around us. And so those that Pluto in Capricorn energy is very potent. Pluto went retrograde and entered um, re-entered Capricorn as going retrograde from Aquarius. Uh, I believe that was on September 1st. I can't always trust my brain here. Um, so, so then October 11th, we had Pluto stationing direct. We had some, some more Pluto energy with us with that direct station. Now Pluto is going direct to finally complete its time in in Capricorn. So these themes are really here. It's like, it's like this, it's the theme of completion. What has been the work of confronting power of having those, um, that shadow, the way that power is used in the shadows be brought into the light of day. Um, it is about how, uh, we, we need to see some of the, corruption or power imbalances and maybe how they show up in our systems and structures and institutions, which is Capricorn, as well as how we, um, you know, or and or depending on how you identify, like if you're a group, you know, women, for example, <laughs> who has been oppressed or marginalized or disempowered in some way or another, um, having the need to reclaim that power and to stand in that power and to see yourself as strong and not just capable, but like the authority, right? Who, who is to say that, you know, where do we get this idea that white male, you know, Anglo-Saxon, whatever it was, <laughs> <laughs> that that's who would have the power, right? Um, it's not, doesn't have to be that way. And so that's some of the stuff that we're working through and confronting. Okay, so that's that's Pluto. And Pluto will be leaving Capricorn on November 8th, or sorry, 19th um, after the election. So, so during this time, and I'm talking about the Mars-Pluto opposition, Mars, which is the sign of or the planet of fighting, <laughs> of standing up for what's right. So it's the planet of action and courage and warrior energy. And you can see the two different ways, two ends of the spectrum of looking at warrior energy, right? Warrior is could be just somebody who fights for the sake of fighting or um, who just wants to defeat their enemy or uh, is is maybe less of a moral high ground, I guess. <laughs> but war, but uh, that warrior energy can also be seen as a warrior of the heart, right? A, a defender, a protector of ideas, ideals, principles. Um, the the less privileged, the less in power. Um, and so ha be, having that warrior energy be finding the courage to stand up for what uh, is important to us, what brings meaning to our lives, what we care about. 
Mars is in Cancer. So a uh, number of things here. So we talked about Pluto in Capricorn and authority and power and how that can be seen differently. And now uh, Mars in Cancer. Um, so Cancer is the energy of the mother. It is the energy of nurturing. And what do we have right now but a battle over women's rights, women's bodily autonomy, um, uh, how how women are viewed in terms of having power over their own lives. Um, so, so Mars in Cancer is, is on the one hand, it's the power over women, right? And on the other hand, it's the power, the empowerment of the mother, the empowerment of, of feminine, protective, nurturing energy, which can be you know, it doesn't matter what gender you are, right? We can all have protective, nurturing energy. Um, and so Mars in Cancer is that protective energy. And it can, uh, it depends on your perspective, how you see that, but it can be a way of finding that warrior courage to stand up for what is right and to defend the right of mothers to mother in the way that is in their own authority, right? True and right for them. So that's what pro-choice is about. It means you, nobody's making rules, Capricorn, again, <laughs> nobody is telling you how, how you have to uh, uh, do it. And, and you're given the authority and the autonomy to make those decisions. Um, so, so, so many layers of meaning here, layers and layers of meaning. Um, and so, okay, so to look at the Mars-Pluto opposition, it is exact on Sunday, November 3rd, so two days before the election, um, it is also exact, I believe, two days after the Scorpio new moon on November 1st. So um, this, this is going to be a, a, an energy that we have in, in the universe, the world around us and in us, right? Astrology is in us and around us. Um, it is a language of energy. It is a language of what we are experiencing qualitatively. So we have this uh, theme of fighting for what we believe in, what is right, what is true. And again, this is not just about women's rights. It's also about defending and protecting the vulnerable, uh, the oppressed, the marginalized. It is about finding empowerment. It is about taking action for um, defending authenticity, right? Who we really are and not having to be someone else to be value, valuable or <laughs> valid to society. Um, and it is also about having power over these uh, groups. And um, so, so it is this epic battle, if you will, you know, to bring it back to things like Lord of the Rings and, and the energy of, of little Frodo saving the world. So, <laughs> so we have, it is up to us. We are the ones, right? We are, we are the vulnerable um, little beings here who need to stand up and say, this is, um, this is me. This is what I care about. This is what I want. And, you know, whatever side of the political spectrum you are on, I'm, uh, it's probably obvious where I'm coming from, but I am speaking to these energies and how they can show up in different ways. Um, so, okay, so we've got that uh, Mars-Pluto opposition at 29 degrees um, Capricorn and cancer so the energy of the father versus the mother patriarchy versus women's power and feminine power um and uh so and yeah and authority versus uh the energy of nurturing um and and, and how we are going to do that 
Um, so 20, I was trying to find the exact minute. Anyway, it's very late <laughs> in Capricorn and Cancer at the very end. So very potent um, in this very, very late part of these cardinal signs, um, bringing in this kind of like, again, it feels like an epic battle. It's like, it's sort of completion of the energy recognition of the themes we are going to be taking with us into the future, because this is not the end, right? It is, it is, um, uh, it is a, a point of decision. It is a point of needing to take a stand for what you care about. And, and, and it continues after that. So, so this final end of Capricorn Cancer, Mars forming its opposition to Pluto, requiring us to be courageous and uh, bring completion to these themes of especially Pluto in Capricorn, where it's been since 2008. So the, the themes that we've been working on related to our structures, our systems, how we um, function in the world, how we organize our lives and what we need to change to make it work better, to bring it to the modern world and function for who we have become um, individually and as a society. So lots of uh, importance to this, this battle, if you will, right? This need to find courage and to be who you are and to be proud of who you are and to be empowered and see yourself as powerful and as an authority and as a decision maker in um, a system that has maybe uh, pushed you to the sides in some ways in the past. Um, then we have, so, so that opposition stays within orb. I mean, it depends how you define the orb, of course. Uh, it's beginning, you know, with, I would say, with very potently with the Aries full moon. So that's October 17th. You know, it begins before that, depending on what orb you use, but that's a technical. Um, the And then the the energy of Mars going in from Cancer into Leo uh, after the exact opposition. And so it will actually be in, Mars will be in Leo during the, um, on election day. And so Mars after the opposition goes into, is at, the opposition is at 29 degrees, 45 minutes, very, very end of the very final degree of these cardinal signs. And then Mars, of course, goes into Leo on um, Sunday, Monday. I'm not sure exactly when, but in there. And uh, and then we have that energy of, of who is who is the king, right? Who, who it will be the monarch and, and focusing on that royal status, that privilege, that, you know, who, who has the privilege? What does privilege mean? Those kinds of questions. Who do we look up to? Who is the figurehead? Um, not that that, can, I don't know whether that question will be answered on the day of the election or not, um, but the theme will be there, right? The quality of energy will be there of thinking about that. And that opposition continues between who is in power. But then on November 19th, Pluto goes into Aquarius and that shit that it brings a, a sea change in terms of the vibe. Um, so it goes from this hard, oppressive, serious, heavy, responsible Capricorn energy, uh, which again, we've been working on since 2008. And we've had some time already in 2023 and 2024 of Pluto in Aquarius. So the, we've had a little bit more of this breaking through energy or this energy of shakeup and freedom and, you know, the a little bit more of a focus on freedom and what does freedom mean? What are our freedoms, right? So many layers to this. So when Pluto goes into Aquarius on November 19th, that shifts that vibe from 
power through authority, power over, power that controls, power within a system or an institution into Pluto and Aquarius, which is power through freedom, uh, authenticity, individuality, freedom through being who you are, and uh, grassroots movements, outside the box thinking, solutions that are innovative, that pull from the future rather than relying on what we know from the past, outside the box thinking, all of that is uh, qualitatively Aquarius. So we have that in the background with Pluto, once Pluto goes into Aquarius, um, Mars then goes retrograde in Leo in December. So December 6th, um, Mars stations retrograde at six degrees Leo, still within that um, opposition to Pluto, but now again, bringing a different vibe. So continuing the opposition into 2025, but now with Pluto solidly in Aquarius. So it changes the dynamic of the battle. Um, not It doesn't resolve it necessarily one way or another, but it changes the vibe we are in. And so it brings more of a focus to empowerment through authenticity, more of a focus on solutions that are based on the future, um, more of a focus on power of the individual rather than power of the system. Um, and, uh, and then we continue in this Mars-Pluto opposition, but now in Aquarius-Leo. And so it's it's the now the battle between who is the figurehead, right? Who holds the office? Who who sits in the castle versus um, the power of the people? And uh, yeah, and and so I don't know what that will look like, right? But the, and there's this Mars energy saying there's a fight here. There's there's a need to take a stand for what you care about, what you believe in, what matters to you, to take action, not just being philosophical, but putting it into action, um, ideals, being guided by your ideals, especially once Pluto goes into Aquarius. Um, and then uh, it's like finding the courage to be who you need to be, finding the courage to be and live your truth, and speak your truth, and take up space from uh, who you authentically are, and what you authentically need to say, and um, being part of a world that is in change, a world that is solving problems from the future, and a world um, that is uh, focused on individuals, and freedom, and uh, challenging authority, <laughs> So, um, so again, like I'm not sitting here predicting the outcome of the election. I am saying these are the qualities that I see with this Mars Pluto opposition, which is really interesting to look at. And, um, you know, I'm sure other astrologers have things to say about it, but this is, uh, this is my perspective or how I think about it. And, um, if you're here, you're probably interested in, in uh, hearing that. So uh, thanks for being here with me. Um, this, uh, this opposition continues into 2025. Um, it's in April that uh, we have, again, the exact opposition with uh, Mars in Leo opposing Pluto in Aquarius once Mars goes direct. So that Mars retrograde period is going to uh, be a regroup period in terms of how we um, organize and think about the fight and think about courage and what it means to take a stand. And um, so there could be an ongoing... <laughs> disagreement or conflict um hopefully hopefully it remains in the realm of ideas but um but as as we need to become more of who we are to question how we've done things and to see strategically what makes sense 
how to be more authentic, how to be true to who we are and uh, what we care about. Again, you know, this is all about principles and uh, what it's, it's the, um, the philosophies and ideas and paradigms that govern how we think. And that is what the battle is over. Um, and that's, you know, Jupiter in Gemini and uh, some other things I looked at in, in my previous video about the election day. So I'll share the link to that as well as the link to the Aries full moon uh, videos. And if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts, feel free to explore those further. But thank you so much for being here. I'm Marina Orms. You can learn more about me at astrologyheals.com and uh, more about how to work with me on my website. I uh, also appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel. That uh, support really helps a lot. So thanks for being here and check it out. I'm here every day with astrology for unshakable self-care. And so I will see you next time. Bye for now.